in plant molecular biology from University of Newcastle, Australia, postdoc from Sydney University, to please come on the stage and provide insights on the role of lab for GMO testing. Uh, thank you for inviting on this forum to present this. Uh, this is a very special topic because mm, at NIPG we are mainly involved in the biotech research in four different disciplines, agriculture, health, industry and environment. And in agribiotech division, our mainstream work is on developing uh, crop varieties uh, through transgenic approaches and also through marker-assisted breeding. So, but here today, uh, Madam gave me this special topic to discuss only on GMO testing because NIPG offer uh, different types of uh, uh, certification for GMs and other uh, uh, different tests. So uh, can you go back to the previous slide please? So these are the contents of today's uh, presentation but at the end I will show you a few slides about the bio risk, risk assessment studies as well. But in the GM more testing so what are these accreditations and uh, why we do this and what are the GMOs and what are the standards available. So please go to next slide. So what is the lab accreditation? This is basically a uh, certification that is actually given by a certified uh, uh, accredited lab. Uh, to the importers, exporters and other agencies. So uh, if you internationally accepted framework according to the ISO certifica certification, NIPG is already uh, ISO 9001 certified center. Uh, that is actually the general overall uh, uh, accreditation certificate. Uh, but uh, in this presentation, I will specifically talk about the uh, 17025 that is, that is basically uh, award for uh, GMO testing facility. Uh, can you go to next please? So this is the uh, our ISO standard lab accreditation that is 17025. So this information is available. Uh, on the website of ISO so you can download and read the details uh, but here we will just talk about the uh, general requirements uh, uh, of for the competency of the testing and calibration actually because this is basically uh, your confidence on the uh, people that you can uh, the certificate that you issue uh, so people inside uh, the country and internationally recognize that certificate that this facility has issued this letter and uh, you can trust on that one uh, next please so in ISO 17025 uh, there are uh, this is actually a uh, this is certificate is actually the uh, your competence, impartiality and consistency in the operation of your laboratory. That the certificate you issue uh, that is recognized by everybody uh, inside and outside the country. So, so it is ap applicable to organizations performing this lab activities. So NIPG is well equipped with these type of services. We uh, receive uh, uh, GMO test samples in routine and we issue the certificate in one week time. So our laboratories uh, uh, that we have a trained manpower at available so that actually test those samples and calibrate so there are three components of this uh, work so you actually you your your testing competency your calibration and also sampling for substance so but NIPG mainly perform the testing services so we got the calibrations uh, from other agencies and uh, this is a routine practice that you have to calibrate your instruments uh, on routine basis and it costs and next please so why what is this gmo i think uh, you all heard a lot about the gmo these are the uh, organisms that are uh, um, uh, genetically modified you 
with some uh, in, in gene of interest you inserted in that organism so those plants or animals are called uh, genetically modified organisms so but uh, <coughs> mostly in the world the gm crops uh, commercialized are cotton uh, hmm, uh, other ones are uh, soybean canola uh, so th there are some examples so there are some traits like the insect resistance trait is available herbicide resistance is available so there are many more traits in the pipeline so recently you heard about the wheat with the drought tolerant gene hb4 is there next please so uh, why gmo detection so this is the main question why we want to test this so because we have because we signed the Cartagena protocol and we are bound to uh, test that material whether this is a GM or not. This is required by the regulatory agencies and also by the consumers because you have to label uh, your product uh, with either it's a GM or non-GM. So there is some standard as well I will show you in the next slide. But here uh, these are some of the countries that allow you uh, how you will label your product so this is the uh, uh, standard if the threshold level is like in China in European Union if it should be 0.9 percent if the contamination is above this you have you must have to label your product so that's why you require the uh, GMO testing and uh, and certification so there are these standards but uh, here for Pakistan still that standard is not available either this is a GM product or non-GM we still are not labeling. So this is the basis uh, of the uh, little bit science in this uh, presentation uh, because this is the basic structure of the gene. This say uh, either you have the marker gene, either it is a antibiotic selection marker or uh, uh, either it is a herbicide marker, you have a promoter, you have a terminator, you have the gene. So you actually test for these things. There are some ISO uh, or internationally approved traits that you have to uh, test for those one either th through the promoter or the NPT, uh, NPT gene or hygromycin gene. So there are some challenges as well. So I will discuss in the next slide, but this is the main things that you have to look into your sample. Uh, and you issue the certificate, this sample is positive or negative. So these are some of the GMO detection methods. Uh, like in case of phenotypic, you have to test the, you can test through germination, through bioassay, through different protein based assay, ELISA, am amino strips, or through the DNA based methods like southern blot, sequencing, PCR, qu qualitative PCR, quantitative PCR. So there are several different methods that uh, you can test your material is GM free or not. But the mainstream work is I think that's the GM, uh, DNA based testing that we perform and there are some standards for that uh, you have to uh, standardize your uh, DNA isolation method you have to test uh, standardize your PCR methods you have to calibrate everything so this is the main crux of this whole presentation that you must have uh, uh, that information and you have to calibrate your facility uh, from the national accredited council and that is linked with the ISO. So every year you get the certification and you, uh, you renew your license along with calibrations. So the, the, these are some of the challenges that every year you face in addition to um, doing that uh, PCR based test in the lab and issue the certificate. So these are some of the challenges that you might not, you are not aware your sample from where it is coming, what is the source, unauthorized GM events. You don't know what is uh, in that your sample and what event is there. Or, and what gene is there and what promoter is there you can just with the some some standard methods you can just try the 35s promoter nos terminator 
NPT gene primer, gene specific primer if you know. So you, there are some challenges for you to test whether this is GM or not. Again, and please go back. So then uh, stacked genes, if there are more than one gene in your product, then even you will be in trouble. You will be not be able to find that what is going on. New transgenics having different promoters, terminators, various transgenes, selectable markers. There are many different selectable markers available and in different gene constructs, different markers are used. Again, new genome editing technologies, if it is edited through some uh, this CRISPR or like this, so th then again you may not be able to identify that uh, change in that one. Either it is a mutated, edited one or uh, the whole cassette is there or not is there. So then again establishment of gene registers. If you have not registered your product on the international this site, ISO site, then you will not be able to get the information of that product. Again biosafety clearing house and uh, these are some of the international agencies uh, certif certified reference material. So you need all that one to, to prove that this product is GM with GM or it is GM free. Yes please, next please. So, yes, there are some standardization validation uh, detection methods. Is may uh, there are some internationally uh, recognized uh, protocols already there, but there are some new things coming out. Uh, yeah. Like this is a middle community reference laboratory for GM food and feed. This is a new thing uh, because the European Union is setting its own standards. So, and you have to follow those ones and must be aware of those ones. So, so EU collaboratives, right, uh, ring trials have been organized, CRL, this uh, GMFF. 35 TNOS, even specific quantitative PCR based detection. So, ye aapko quantitative pe jana padega, tab aapko pata chalega ki wo aapki usme express ho raha hai ki nahi ho raha. So, this is not just a simple PCR. So, EU recommends careful GMO detection by an ISO 17025 accredited lab. So, these protocols are available uh, and uh, I have with me as well. So, so these are different type of uh, ISO standards for GMO testing. So these are different for different, uh, if you list, these are, there, are, there are six different types. Qualitative, quantitative, like this. This is a qualitative, this is a quantitative, this is a nucleic acid extraction, uh, this is another standard for this one, then protein based methods, then this is uh, another general requirements, refination, then this is screening of GM organisms in cotton and textiles. So this is a new thing because now even people demand that you the, com, the, the textile product you export, people want certificate. Your fiber is free of the, those contaminants or not. Well, that's a very difficult job because uh, your fiber is, this is a nucleus free. This is only cellulose. This is a wall only. So it's very difficult to detect uh, if whether this is a GM or not and issue the certificate. So, so these are some of the uh, 17 0 to 17 uh, uh, facilities that uh, we have. Uh, facilitate cooperation between laboratories and other bodies, generating wider acceptance of results between countries, test reports, certificates, selected more than one country or another. So that's why this 17025 is required. Any, any accredited lab must have this facility or uh, allowed to do this one GMO testing. So <coughs> at NIPG, we offer different type of uh, uh, services like this quantitative PCR, uh, qualitative, both quantitative. We also offer ELISA amino strip testing. Yeah. So this we can also uh, uh, we can check this is a GM or not. So genetic elements may promoter hai, terminator hai. Yeah. We have facility for MON531 testing because uh, the really if you uh, this is actually the stringency level that what type this one is a simple test then you go for the gene and then you, you use the primers from the genomic DNA across the promoter and the terminator or the gene. So just to verify that that event is there. So in this way, uh, 
anip ji offers uh, different uh, courses uh, during different time this is one of the course that we offered long time ago and we trained many people in gmo testing uh, so uh, there are next please so this is one day awareness seminar we conducted on gm detection of rice in 20 2022 so this type of activity we actually nipji is the premier uh, biotechnology center in pakistan that actually started all this programs and uh, we trained many people and uh, all the laboratories in pakistan or every i think lab has a member from nipji that working there so we got uh, different uh, certificates from this uh, uh, for the dna detection at nipji and uh, we are routinely doing uh, these uh, tests at nipji uh, with the help of this uh, pnac uh, next please sir responsibilities uh, of gmo testing lab lab includes meet the requirements of sendi to 2005 must be at competence so this must all be with line with all these things uh, then you can uh, offer those tests so so benefits of accredited labs include confidence of customers on competence of lab satisfaction of customers valid results staff with trained manpower and all the resources facilitation with positive with the trade especially because in rice we uh, we issue the certificates for rice export and uh, routine and uh, our our certificates are uh, it accepted internationally so uh, this is the second part of my presentation this is actually in addition to the gmo testing facility because uh, we have at nipji the uh, animal house facility for risk assessment in for, for bio safety work so these are some of the tests that we offer at nipji we have this animal house available we we do this uh, oral toxicity dermal toxicity and uh, this is basically for uh, Uh, the issuing the bio safety certificate for any gm product if someone want to commercialize so we make all these tests in routine and offer those certificates yes please so this lab is accredited with 17025 and with 2017 and uh, these are the different tests and uh, their levels next please next please so toxicity studies include uh, as uh, in the uh, last meetings on soybean uh, uh, some people wants to test those soybean seeds and soybean material but there are some levels like this this acute toxicity that can be done in 14 days on rats mouse and dogs monkeys sub sub acute uh, toxicity takes 28 days but this sub chronic toxicity takes 13 weeks uh, and plus plus uh, so but this chronic toxicity takes one year so you have to feed that uh, product to the animals and then you collect the blood samples and other uh, you have to uh, analyze it and it, it takes time so that is the real uh, uh, time frame for that one product that you need at least one year this is uh, uh, the toxicology based risk assessment of transgenic crops that we have already been doing with different uh, with gm um, uh, wheat sugar cane with different cotton and uh, we have different type of uh, with different bt genes uh, these these products are available so we performed uh, risk assessment studies for those ones uh, next please this is also part of our uh, um, risk assessment study on fish so uh, we have this uh, these fish tanks and these fish is available so if uh, uh, need uh, we can do this one as well so just i i think i summarize this one uh, because gmo accreditation services ensure presence absence of gm traits in test samples according to iso standards toxicology labs provide risk assessment of gmo to provide data of quality control and for regulatory compliance so nipji offer these pcr based gmo testing and toxicity tests so that's all 